In this video, I want to show you how to calculate the future value of a growing annuity. So if you remember, with the future value of an ordinary annuity, what we're doing is we're looking at a series of cash flows, which you could think about as deposits into an investment account or a savings account. So we're looking at these cash flows, we're putting money into this account, and we're earning a rate of return, and we're saying, okay, at the end of a certain period of time, let's say 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, what is going to be the ending balance? For example, if we invest $10 a year, every year we put in $10 and we earn a certain rate of return, let's say 5%, at the end of 20 years, how much money are we going to have? So that's the future value of an ordinary annuity. However, we can think about it like this. We could say that that annuity could be growing and not growing because we're earning a return on it, but growing because we're putting in a different amount for the cash flow each period. So what if, for example, we said, okay, we're gonna put in $10 at the uh, end of period one, but at the end of period two, we're gonna put in $11, and then we're gonna put in $12. So the actual amount, the cash flow, is not constant. It's not just $10 every time or $100 every time. It's actually growing, it's increasing with each period. So if we know the growth rate by which this is increasing, we actually have a nice handy formula that we can use to calculate the future value of the growing annuity. Okay, so I'll just put that GA, future value of growing annuity. It's going to be the cash flow, okay, which uh, when we say cash flow, we mean at the beginning of, or the, at the end of period one. So the cash flow from period one, because it's gonna change every year, right? Remember we said here it's $10, but then it goes to 11 and so forth. So it's, it's not the same cash flow each time, it's the cash flow at the end of the very first period, okay? We multiply that by this big thing here. We've got one plus the discount rate, which is the rate of return, to the nth power, which is the number of periods, and we subtract from all that one plus the growth rate. And again, the growth rate, we're talking about the growth rate of the cash flow. Okay, so if the growth rate of cash flow is 3%, then this would be 0 0.03. Then we take that to the nth power, the number of periods, and then in our denominator, we have the discount rate minus the growth rate. Again, for the savings example I gave you, the, the discount rate would be the rate of return that we're earning on our savings account or investment account, and the growth rate is the amount by which the cash flows that we're putting into the account are changing. I hope that's clear. Let, let me show you with an example. It'll make it a little bit easier to kind of connect all the dots here. So let's do an example where we say, okay, you want to save money for retirement. You're going to make an annual deposit, and the very first deposit you're going to make is going to be $2,000. Okay. Now you're going to make another deposit the next year, but that's going to be 2% higher than $2,000. And then the next year it's going to grow again by 2%. So each year you're putting in more and more money that you're investing. You're not just putting in $2,000 every year. Okay, so you, let's say that we do this. We ultimately do this for 30 years. And again, it's not 30 times that we're putting in $2,000. The, the year two, we're going to put in $2,000, uh, you know, increase by 2%. So each time it's going to get higher and higher that we're putting in more and more money. Okay. Now we're going to earn a rate of return at 8%. So remember, that's different. That's the amount, if you think about this as an investment account, that's the amount the money in there is earning 8%. Maybe it's invested in stocks or bonds or something, right? So you're getting 8%. And what this 2% is, is that's the growth rate of the cash flow. Okay, so that's an important distinction. And the question is, how much money will we have if we did this after 30 years time? And we can just take this, this equation that we had up here and we can plug in the numbers and we can very quickly get a solution. Okay, so I've just taken it. This is, this is the same equation that we had up uh, above for the future value of a growing annuity. Okay, so our cash flow, now again, we're cash flow, we're talking about period one. This is, this is the first cash flow because it's going to be different in period two, period three, and so forth because it's getting larger, it's growing. So it's going to be $2,000 is that first cash flow. Then we're going to multiply it by this. We've got 1 plus the discount rate, which is 0 0.08 to the 30th power, because there's 30 periods, minus 1 plus the growth rate, which was 2%. Remember, that's the amount by which the cash flows are going to grow. 1 plus 0 0.02, and it's, point, it's 0 0.02 because we take 2% converted to a decimal. Raise that to the 30th power for the number of periods. And then a denominator, we have the discount rate minus the growth rate. Right now, if you calculate all that out, what you get 
is $275,043. I rounded to the nearest dollar. Okay, so that is the amount we would have if we started and said, okay, look, at the end of this period, we're going to start saving for retirement. So at the end of year one, we, we deposit $1,000 or $2,000, excuse me, in each year, that amount that we, that we deposit into the account is going to grow by 2%. And then the account itself is earning, whatever it happens to be in the account at any given point in time, is earning a rate of return of 8%. If we factor all those things in, after a period of 30 years, if we did that, we would have $275,043 in our account.